Hi, I'm JJ Velaya. Welcome to my world. And it's a loaded question and most people have various definitions of this. But I've always maintained that for me personally, luxury is being able to do exactly what I've wanted to do all my life. And I think you can't have a better situation than that. So pretty much, uh, in simple word, it implies that if I've spent my entire lifetime till now working exactly on what I love working on, and therefore not realizing that I'm working at all, enjoying every single moment to it. I mean, that is to me a sheer luxury. I think one can't be generic about this definition because a lot of people have different parameters to define luxury. A lot of people obviously connect them to material things, so therefore that fabulous house, those great cars, a lot of wealth, fantastic travel, um, all connotes tangible luxury. Um, but I think COVID, the pandemic, has sort of realigned at least some thought processes. Um, so a lot of people are now realizing that luxury is being able to spend time with your loved ones, uh, being able to live in a home which is beautiful, savor it, which nobody did because everybody was really at a home to sleep in, but otherwise they were out all the time. And suddenly you're now stuck at home and you're, you know, you're sort of enjoying it more. It also means uh, establishing a close circle of friends and cherishing them more. So I think a lot of things have changed, but uh, on the other end, uh, the spirit of celebration has become, an, become even more buoyant than ever. So everybody now, realizing how fragile life is, wants to celebrate even more. So luxury can be plugged in anywhere, whether it's your close circle or the spirit to celebrate or um, you know, to achieve tangible goals. Uh, therefore, it's not a generic definition. But yes, uh, I would say in my definition that if somebody uh, can actually achieve a beautiful balance between uh, a spiritual existence and a material existence, and both are essential, uh, then they've truly kind of reached the right levels of luxury. I, well, you know, it's my... Uh, it's my heart and soul and everything that I can think of. Um, it feeds me, which is very important. But more than anything else, um, it lets me enjoy to the extent that I want to. And to me, that's the most important thing. So as I mentioned earlier, if I'm doing something that I really love, then the next day is always something you look forward to. Uh, so when something is your very core, it's like the air you breathe or the water you drink or the food you eat, how can you even define something like that? It's just part of your being. I'm not much of a collector, but uh, men anyway are kind of restricted when it comes to sartorial choices. So you have, of course, great clothes, and now uh, the new trend is, of course, great shoes and sneakers are suddenly becoming big. But uh, the gentleman, that sort of dress code, uh, men used to you know, enjoy collecting uh, cufflinks and pocket squares and watches and socks. These are the kind of shoes, more focused on accessories. So personally, I've always sort of had a penchant for cufflinks because I think they add that little, you know, that little sort of edge to your otherwise classic dressing. Uh, the favorite ones actually I'm wearing, I wear my heart on my sleeve, literally. So these are my favorites also gifted by someone special. Um, I think that also adds a lot because A, uh, there's a sentiment behind what you receive and that always is, you know, very fulfilling. But otherwise also I avidly collect sort of uh, cufflinks. I've got a few here to kind of share with you. They're an assortment from various things like these beautiful semi-precious uh, stones but cast in sterling silver, um, Moroccan motives. I'm multiculturalism. Um, sort of fan at heart, so some of those. Then of course, pure sterling silver, very modern, but I like to sort of age them. I actually like to make them go a little antique to kind of enjoy wearing them more. Um, turtles, this is my new sort of favorite because um, we're actually working on introduce, introducing uh, the tortoise as sort of the official animal of the brand as well. So this is my latest gift, much cherished. 
Mustaches, always good to have this kind of just kind of driving home a point. So no particular reason. So I think these are really, men should be paying a lot of attention to detail when it comes to dressing. And uh, as I said, cufflinks is one, but pocket squares, we make a lot of our own, of course. And socks, shoes, sneakers, great bet. Other than that, I'm not much of a collector. I'm not the kind who buys fancy sports cars and, you know, like multiple homes and everything. You know, I've always sort of believed that anything that you associate your brand with must have a little story to it. So besides the fact that the tortoise is considered the harbinger of prosperity and sort of uh, good fortune, but there's also a very strong uh, a link of it with the Hindu mythology, where, you know, the tortoise was a base for, for I have to find the exact story, but if you delve into Hindu mythology, you'll realize that this is probably the most uh, uh, least spoken about sort of animal uh, in, in Hindu mythology. So while we're talking about all the others, the tortoise has got sort of, uh, well, he's there, but he's not really spoken about too much. I mean, our favorite story has always been the tortoise and the hare, where we all know who kind of ran faster and who finished the race. So there are multiple, therefore, facets besides various connotations of the animal across the world as a harbinger of prosperity and good fortune. Uh, slow and steady always wins the race. So that's a good story we all grew up listening. And of course, uh, it's nuances in Hindu mythology. Well, I'm discovering them. So I, I was talking to uh, my brother the other day and I said, I'm gonna work on two looks, which is the day look and the evening look. And the evening look is predictable and I'm in it at the moment. Uh, so that goes and for that, you know, just go with uh, fine handmade shoes and beautiful hand wound watches, lovely cufflinks and pocket squares. But for daytime, you know, the whole, uh, the whole sort of story of jeans and sneakers with still my kurta shirts, I don't wear shirts otherwise. Um, and sort of maybe even embracing tech for watches and all and not going the predictable route. So, you know, you've only got those many hours in a day and we must try and sort of experiment with as much uh, as we can without, of course, uh, getting too carried away, which also happens with some people. It doesn't work, but you do it. But uh, so, yeah. Well, actually, I just returned yesterday from a sourcing trip from overseas. So it's something I do all the time and travel is, yeah, it is the, it's the first chapter of every book I write in terms of every collection I do. Um, for example, the current collection is all, it's called Alma, which is based on Spanish influences. Um, but I mean, I can't imagine uh, my life without the concept of travel. In fact, we launched our bridge to luxury line called JJV which is essentially based on occasion wear for travel. And it is inspired or is a tribute uh, to the land of my forefathers, which is Kapoorthala. And more specifically by Maharaja Jagajit Singh's travelogues. So it's just an extremely important part of my very being. Um, so yeah, I'm sourcing all the time. And next month I'll be doing a little preview of a lot of things I've handpicked, curated, and I want to now show to the world that you can have them. It's, I've picked them for you and you can have them. So that's happening next month. Letting you know about it actually. You know the thing about uh, my home, my workplace, everywhere is that I hate anything which doesn't surprise and which doesn't tell a story. And this is what I find very uh, incredibly boring in today's interiors because while they're beautiful and lovely and well finished and everything, very few actually surprise you or tell you a story. So normally when a home is done, you see people walking from one room to the other and knowing, yes, what to expect. Very beautiful, but this, you know, the whole sort of palette continues. In my case, I like to surprise. I want people to walk from one space to the other and not know what to expect. Uh, and if you want to do that, it means mixing the old with the new to create interesting stories. This piece is a particular favorite and there's a beautiful story which is very dear to my heart in this one. So we 
on one of my multiple sourcing trips, we got into one of the warehouses in Kochi in South India, and we were digging around and finding stuff which we could, you know, kind of uh, take with us. We found this old piece, carved piece of wood in South India, lying in a, in a space in an antique warehouse. And obviously we got it for ourselves. I wanted to use it as a headboard of a bed, uh, but somehow that didn't work out. So we said, okay, let's just make a beautiful love seat, you know, which is just grand. So as luck would have it, this piece found its way as the back of that love seat. But when we cleaned it up to kind of finish it, this amazing image of Guru Nanak Dev Ji emerged, which for the life of us, we didn't notice it when we bought it. And to find a carving of Guru Nanak in South India is a bit of a, this thing. So I believe, and you know, we placed it and everything and we suddenly noticed, hang on, where did that come from? So to me, that was almost symbolic of blessings, which were coming our way when we create when we created this space. You know, so such stories and there are plenty of them around. Every little you know piece will have some small nuance which is attached to it. So this I think is very important. It's not about painting the wall, putting a sofa, adding a table. It's about are you is your space going to grow with you? Is it going to age with you? Is it the only is it going to pass on to the next generation? So these are very important things when you do luxury homes. And that's something I've always believed.